Critical Chain, first coined by Eliyahu Goldratt, he argued that project network may be constrained by resource and technical dependencies. It's hardwired in human brain to add just-in-case time when estimate something. With all of safety time addition, why do many projects still come in behind schedule? The first one is Parkinson's Law, which clearly states that the time you have to perform a task is the time that you will take to finish the task. Well, isn't that weird? Self-protection is not reporting an early finish of tasks to the management due to fear that the management will reduce the time allotted to finish the same task next time or due to peer pressure of avoid being named as a rate buster. Goldratt uses metaphor for project as relay race. The baton signifies a handoff of responsibility if you drop it and the next runner is set up for failure. This is caused by poor communication and inflexible resource schedules. Excessive multitasking. Time is money. Then, the biggest question comes, am I multitasking so much that slows down my completion of task? Resource bottleneck explains instances where the resources required are tied up in other tasks leading to the delay of the project. Student syndrome, just like <coughs> students who procrastinate their assignments. In project, the obstacles are not detected until you start the project. This creates a delay. To solve all of these problems, Goldratt came across the critical chain concept. Critical chain can be simply defined as the longest string of dependencies that exist on the project network of activities. We don't need to pad up all the activities. We need buffers. The first one is the project buffer, which exists at the end of the project and is given by 50% of the difference of critical chain with padding to critical chain without padding. The second one is feeder buffer. In order to prevent the critical chain from delay, buffers are added to the non-critical path wherever it merges with the critical path. All we need to understand is how to analyze the paths that are going to meet the critical chain and once we have done that, the biggest question comes of assigning the amount of weightage that we can give to this buffer. Different types of projects require different weightages. Project managers generally assign a weightage between 20 to 30 percent in regular or commodity projects. However, this figure changes entirely with the nature of the projects. The third one is resource buffer. Time buffers are inserted where scarce resources are needed for an activity. Resource time buffers come in at least two forms. One, time buffer attached to critical resource. This will preserve the relay race. Two, time buffer added to activities preceding the work of a scarce resource. This kind of buffer protects against resource bottlenecks by increasing the likelihood that the preceding activity will be completed when the resource is available. So, in case anyone still wondering what is the difference between critical chain and critical path, the key difference is that in critical chain we involve the resources that are performing that activity. So, critical chain gives us a better and clear picture than the critical path as we are able to identify our critical resource and be more focused on that rather than each and every other activities happening in the project as a whole. However complex is the matter of critical chain, but in the end, it provides project managers a realistic insight to the time and resources that are needed during execution of the project. Analyzing and calculating critical chain helps project managers to allocate budgets accordingly.